Hello and welcome to Surgical Utopia. Today we'll discuss on coronal flap. This flap is used for procedures that require exposure of the middle and the upper third of the facial skeleton. There are basically two advantages of this uh, exposure. The first one is that it gives excellent exposure to the middle and the upper one third of the face and uh, second one is that the scar is hidden in the hairline. So now we will see the placement of the incision. Uh, this is hairline and the incision is placed at least 3 to 4 centimeters behind the hairline on the vertex of the head. Now in male patients, because of the male pattern baldness, the incision can be placed on the posterior region as well. So in male patients, the incision is placed posteriorly. Now the placement of incision also depends upon the amount of exposure and the kind of procedure that has to be taken place. So in uh, doing the procedures where the zygomatic arch has to be exposed, the incision is carried downward inferiorly until the ear lobe. And in cases where the zygomatic arches are not to be exposed or there is no need for the exposure of the zygomatic arch, the incision is extended only up till the helix of the ear. So in patients where the zygomatic arch exposure is not needed, the incision will end at the helix and in cases where the zygomatic arch exposure is needed, the incision will be extended downwards up till the ear lobe. Now, the initial incision is to be made on the vertex and it extends from one superior temporal line to another on either side. So, uh, this is our superior temporal line and our incision or the first portion of the incision will be placed from one superior temporal line to the another superior temporal line on the other side and this incision will be placed on the skin subcutaneous tissue and the gallia region so that is the extent of the incision skin subcutaneous tissue and the gallia whereas from the lateral aspect this is the superior temporal line and this is our initial portion of the incision and this incision will extend laterally below the superior temporal line on the temporalis fascia or up to the level of temporalis fascia and over here the incision can be extended to the preauricular aspect up to the ear lobe at the preauricular skin fold so our final incision over here will be like this and after the wound margin is elevated for up to one to two centimeters and the hemostatic clips are placed on the bleeding vessels or these vessels are cauterized. So over here, the flap is dissected in the anterior region, either by the periosteal elevator or by fin finger dissection. And as the flap is being dissected in the anterior region, attention will develop on the lateral side because the lateral side of the flap is still attached to the temporalis fascia. And as the flap is dissected in the anterior region, there will be some tension which will develop in the flap because it is still attached to the temporalis muscle on the lateral side. So the dissection is done below the superior temporal line on the lateral aspect so that the flap can be dissected more anteriorly. So now when the flap has been dissected from the lateral aspect of the skull, and let's say that the flap is here now. Now a glistening white temporalis fascia will be visible on the lateral aspect of the head. So this is our temporalis fascia that is colored in the yellow color. And then the flap is dissected anteriorly till a point 3 to 4 centimeter superior to the superior orbital rim. So now the flap is going to be placed over here at this position. And as the flap is dissected up till uh, 3 to 4 cm above the supraorbital rim, the pericranium is visible now. So now a horizontal incision is placed extending from one superior temporal line to another superior temporal line above the pericranium. Now the periosteum will be dissected up till the supraorbital rim and laterally the temporalis fascia will be dissected inferiorly and this dissection will extend laterally up till the root of the zygomatic arch. A word of caution over here is that uh, the lateral incision over the temporalis fascia should not be placed above the superior temporal line because it may nick the temporalis muscle which may in turn bleed. 
so after the temporalis fascia is dissected up till the root of the zygomatic arch then an incision is placed from the root of the zygomatic arch in a superior and forward direction until it meets the horizontal incision which was placed earlier now the incision on the temporalis fascia which was at an angle of 45 degrees will join the horizontal incision now this entire flap can be dissected anteriorly and as the temporalis fascia is also dissected anteriorly the zygomatic arch and the zygomatic bone can be palpated and the inferior dissection can be done easily and safely on the lateral aspect because the temporal branch of the facial nerve is elevated along with the temporalis fascia which was present on the lateral aspect of the temporalis fascia it is dissected anteriorly along with the flap hence a safe dissection can be done in an inferior direction on the lateral aspect now the entire flap is dissected and at this point the lateral orbital rim the zygomatic bone and the zygomatic arch are exposed now in order to expose the orbit area the neurovascular bundle should be released from the superior orbital rim from its superior orbital notch a subperiosteal dissection is done on the supraorbital rim and the inside of the orbit and the contents of the orbit are freed from its fall from the superior wall from the medial wall and from the lateral wall from the floor of the uh, orbit except the medial canthal tendon which is present on the v medial wall except for that attachment the entire content has been deattached and while performing the section on the medial wall care should be taken for the posterior ethmoidal artery so in order to expose the temporal fossa the temporalis muscle has to be incised and it has to be stripped from the temporal bone and the temporal surface of the zygomatic bone and in order to expose the tmj region the preauricular incision is given and over here incision is given on the periosteum just lateral to the tmj capsule and the condylar region is exposed exposing the condyle and at this point if wider exposure is needed then there are two approaches for that first one is that the mesenteric muscle is stripped from the lateral surface of the ramus and it is stripped upwards from the lateral surface exposing the entire tmg and condylar region care should be taken at this point that from the sigmoid nerve the mesenteric artery and nerve are passing through so they should be avoided and the second uh, approach is that the zygomatic arch is osteomatized and the mesenteric muscle is pedicled on that zygomatic arch and dissection is done between the temporalis muscle and the mesenteric muscle thus stripping the muscles from the lateral surface of the ramus and exposing the area so guys that's it for today and thank you for watching the video